Welcome to this training video on Pay Parity. When Pay Parity is deployed to your service, all users within your setup will automatically be set to a no authority for Pay Parity calculations. We want all organisations to control who does have the ability to view Pay Parity data due to its sensitivity. For those of you that have the authorization to users, and are the decision maker in your organization, to enable some users for pay parity, go to your center menu, select users, select the username required, and in the bottom right hand corner, you can change this option from no to either read or write. Read means they can read the information pertaining to pay parity in all fields, but no ability to change. Write means they have full access and can amend, update, delete any data concerning pay parity. So please be mindful of your selections for your staff. Once set up, we can go to the center menu and select center options. On the far left hand side, you will see the option that says pay parity. In here, you can nominate an effective date that you wish InfoCare to start recording the staff hour count from. This is in relation to the staff timesheet generation in InfoCare. You will want to pre-populate some information pertaining to each employee regarding their hours that they have worked previously in order to set the information up correctly. From that moment on, InfoCare will start recording this automatically from the date that you do enter here. For the purposes of our training video, we have set that to the Monday of this week, being the 15th of July. The pay parity attestation will come through automatically, pending what you have set up in the funding rates area in InfoCare. Within the funding rates tables, there is an area there for you to opt in or select the option that you have opted in for in relation to pay parity, extended or full. If no option is selected, by default, this will be base. So for our purpose today, our organization is set up for extended parity, hence the default setting has already come through. Please don't hesitate to reach out to our team for further support with this, in particular, the setting up of your funding rates. The event warning is where an event will come up on your notice board prior to it actually coming into fruition. So the default setting is 80, for our purpose today, we have set this to 160. So 160 hours prior notice, that warning will first appear on our notice board. We then refer to our staff activities counted and pay parity calculations. This is relating to the staff activities that you can select in your staff timesheets for each employee. By default, there are multiple selections that will automatically be included. If there are any other staff activities that you require to be counted towards the purpose of pay parity, please note you must ensure you comply with the Ministry's rules regarding what can and cannot be counted. It is just a matter of selecting it to be included, or in some instances, deselect if you deem it should not be counted. If in doubt, please reach out to the Ministry for further support. Once you have made your selections, please click the Update button to save your data. From here, we can work on the employee menu and setting up employees with their pay parity details. Today, I'm going to work on a staff member called Hunter. You will notice for Hunter, we have the pay parity option available here. Currently, all of Hunter's details are blank. Hunter is an existing staff member, so we need to select what qualification group Hunter is currently on. If you are on the extended or full, you will have the ability to select the management position here. If you're on base and parity, that option will not be available. For staff who have worked prior to the 15th of July, remember this is an effective date we entered into our center information uh, center option screen under the pay parity tab. Do you need to select the information in here or enter the information in here for their total calculated credited hours? That is all the information that you need to calculate at this point. 
If this is a brand new staff member that has started on or after the 15th of July, you will need to populate the prior recognised service and or the prior relevant work experience, and this field will be left blank. When you do create your staff timesheets in InfoCare, the system will start to generate hours down here, depending on the hours the staff member has worked at the service. Please note it is always at the balance as at today's date, so the hours will automatically be counted when we create the staff timesheets. It also is letting us know that we have made some changes to the calculations, so we do need to click the update button in order for the system to calculate and work out what step the staff member is currently on and what their total credited hours are. Please note we also have some links here to the Ministry's website which will provide some valuable information on pay parity. In addition, we have extensive help menus within each of our screens. Once you have set up your staff details, we can then view reports. Under the reports menu, group reports can be selected and the option of general. And here you will see a report called Staff Pay Parity. You're in charge of the date range that you select and the information will then be displayed for that period. Please note those of you who are part of more than one service and those of you with group, region, area or subgroup access, you will be able to run this port collectively for all of your organisations. You do also have the ability to do the create file that will generate this spreadsheet format of this information. We hope that has provided you with some valuable insight into the pay parity functionality in InfoCare. Please don't hesitate to reach out to our customer success team for any further support that you need. Ka kite.